Hey guys, today I'm going to be installing a rolling release distribution called PC Linux OS. PC Linux OS, or sometimes just shortened to PC LOS, has been around since 2003, so it's quite old. It's been around forever. To demonstrate how long PC Linux OS has been around, uh, here is the DistroWatch page hit rankings. You notice number nine, PC Linux OS. Now this is not here in 2017 this is in the year 2004 so PC Linux has been around for a while it's been popular for a long time I mean it was already in the top 10 of the distro watch page hit rankings back in 2004 and here is the distro watch page hit rankings for the last six months you see PC Linux is number 15 so it's been a kind of a top 10 to top 20 uh, distro watch uh, ranking for you know the last 14 years now. A little more information about PC Linux OS. Uh, reading the little blurb from DistroWatch, it is a user-friendly Linux distribution with out-of-the-box support for many popular graphics and sound cards as well as other peripheral devices. Uh, it appears that it is based on Mandriva. Actually it's an independent distribution but it was originally forked from Mandriva which comes from Mandrake which comes from Red Hat so this is a RPM distribution we can use RPMs their website is PCLinuxOS.com I will say that the website is kind of underwhelming as far as the uh, look and organization of it uh, for a, a Linux distro that has been around as long as PC Linux OS has been around and that's got some popularity behind it uh, I would expect a little bit more of a professional website. This looks like your standard like WordPress blog site, maybe a Joomla site. PC Linux OS comes by default with a KDE desktop edition and a Mate desktop edition. I'm going to download the KDE edition and I'm going to install this inside a virtual machine. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've downloaded the, the ISO for PC Linux OS, the KDE edition and when you first launch it you get this menu here uh, if you don't choose anything within a few seconds it automatically boots you into the live uh, desktop environment which in this case should be the KDE desktop environment alright it's asking about our keyboard layout it has chosen US keyboard okay and we booted into the live desktop here on the uh, desktop here we have install me so I'm gonna click that and that should launch the installer alright the install wizard this wizard will help you to install PC Linux OS okay click next alright alright I have the option of using all the free space available on this disk just giving PC Linux the whole hard drive of this virtual machine. That's what I'm going to do. We also have the option of doing some custom partitioning. All right, you get your standard warning that all data on this disk is about to be wiped. You know, it's about to format and start writing to the drive. I'm going to click next. All right, we get this little message here. We've detected that some packages are not needed for your system config. We will remove the following packages unless you choose otherwise unused hardware support. If I click advanced, what is this? Uh, some NVIDIA drivers? Yeah, I probably don't need those. So, and I click next and let it uninstall those NVIDIA drivers. I don't need the NVIDIA drivers since I'm running this in virtual box. And it looks like it's going ahead and installing PC Linux to, to the system here this may take a few minutes I'm assuming that after it runs through this then we'll get to the part where we create a username password and all that alright the installer is asking about the bootloader which bootloader to use we want to use grub2 uh, main options delay before booting default image I'm just going to leave that as the default we need a password and the installation should continue. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to leave this all as default. All right. 
let's see a bug report that's never good the Drac Live install program has crashed with the following error that's something to do with the Grub2 installation that's unfortunate okay guys this is like the third or fourth time I'm uh, trying to install PC Linux OS every time I get to trying to install Grub2 either with the uh, graphical or the text menu the uh, installer crashes every time we try to ins install the Grub2 bootloader so this will be the last time I, I go through the installation I'm not going to do it on camera but this time I'm going to try to install a different bootloader other than the Grub2 bootloader and see if we can get this thing installed okay guys what I ended up doing was installing grub that is grub grub not grub2 and that installed fine so we've got the grub bootloader lo rather than the grub2 bootloader continuing with the installation now we've re rebooted the machine and we gotta go through some uh, user settings so time zone it's chosen the correct time zone uh, clock settings I'm not gonna mess with this but it does look like it has the correct time uh, NP, NTP server uh, password we need to set a root password so alright now we need to create a user I'm just gonna call this user PC Linux OS login name I'm gonna leave the login name is PC Linux OS and we need to give this user a password. All right, username PC Linux OS password. And let's see what happens. This will be the uh, KDE Plasma Desktop. You get a nice little greeter sound there alright and this is our newly installed PC Linux OS uh, I'm gonna take a couple of minutes see if I can get the virtual box guest editions working so I can make this screen resolution a little bigger okay guys I spent quite a bit of time trying to get the virtual box guest editions working correctly with PC Linux OS I never could get it to work right so uh, I was able to get it installed but the biggest screen resolution I could get was this one right here which is the width I think is 1028 so it's a little better than 800 by 600 which is what it was initially uh, I can at least work with this I'm gonna go ahead and continue the review with this screen resolution here I'm gonna go ahead and go through the KDE menu show you what's installed by default on PC Linux OS so alright it looks like they're using a very traditional looking menu here in the KDE menu uh, on the left hand column we have I guess some uh, some launchers here for programs popular programs that you'll use a lot like the KDE system settings the dolphin file manager the Kate text editor and our console which is terminal then we have some power session buttons here alright under the subcategories for applications here the first thing we have is more applications under that we have HTOP which is a system monitoring tool it's an interactive process viewer I did a video recently on HTOP really nice program console of course is our terminal it's the default terminal in KDE you have KSysGuard which is another system monitor but this one's a uh, graphical system monitor part of the default KDE programs we have net applet under archiving we have ARC which is our archiving manager for zip and unzip that sort of thing configuration we have you know configurations for our computer printer screen resolution which I played around with to try to get the virtual box guest editions uh, working properly it, it didn't help gparted which is a uh, partition program uh, HP device manager we have our info center some KDE connect settings KDE system settings kdocker K Wallet Manager, LibreOffice Manager, Localization Manager, My Live USB, I guess for creating, you know, live USB sticks, uh, NTFS configuration tool, some Qt settings, and SCIM input method setup. 
Under development, we have our icon browser. Now that's interesting. Let me open this. This is uh, actually pretty cool uh, for those of you that play around a lot with uh, theming your system and you're wanting to know like the names of the icons and what they look like in your whatever theme you're doing. So this is actually a, a really cool program for uh, for some of you guys out there that do a lot of theming. I really like that they installed that by default. And we have a uh, some LibreOffice base and Qt5 linguist. Text editors, we have Kate, of course, your standard text editor for the KDE desktop environment. We also had KWrite and Master PDF Editor Force for creating and editing PDF files. Under education, we have LibreOffice Math. File tools, we have BleachBit. We have the Dolphin File Manager, of course. We open up Dolphin, your standard Dolphin File Manager for the KDE desktop environment. KFind, and we have Zulu Crypt and Zulu Mount. Under games, we have K Patience, and that's the only game installed by default. Graphics, they've installed GIMP by default. That's great. GIMP is the GNU image manipulation program. Basically, it is a uh, like a free and open source software kind of Adobe Photoshop. GwynView is our image viewer. LibreOffice Draw, Master PDF again. Simple Scan, that is a scanning program. And Spectacle. Spectacle is our uh, screen shot utility. Under Internet, we have Chocock which I don't know what the hell that is. Strange name though. Uh, I'm guessing it's some sort of uh, instant messaging service. Microblog. Okay, that's interesting. Funny name though. Chocock. Hmm. Alright, Dropbox is installed by default. You don't see Dropbox installed by default on too many Linux distros or Google Chrome for that matter. So that's kind of cool. KDE Connect, Network Center, Pigeon Instant Messenger, we have Qubit Torrent, which is a BitTorrent client. You see that a lot in KDE desktop environments. Skype is installed by default on PC Linux OS. You don't see Skype installed by default on very many Linux distros because most of them tend to stick to free software, and Skype is obviously not free. It's Microsoft, uh, proprietary software. Thunderbird is our email client. Office, we have KCalc, K Character Select, KeyPass. Then the entire LibreOffice suite. Under Software Center, we have LibreOffice Manager again, Localization Manager again, and the Synaptic Package Manager is our graphical package manager. I'm sure most of you guys that have been around Linux for a little while are familiar with the Synaptic Package Manager. Really cool uh, way of updating your system. Under Science, we have LibreOffice Math, Sound, we have Blockify, we have Dead Beef, which uh, that's an interesting audio player. I really like it. Uh, it's a very minimal, lightweight music player. It's not in a lot of repos out there either, so that's kind of cool that PC Linux is uh, installing that by default. A lot of you guys, depending on what distro you're using, may have to build that from, from source when you install it, you know, install it from a tarball or something. Pulse Audio, Spotify, and VLC is the media player they installed by default. The best multimedia player on Linux for sure. Best video player by far. And uh, under video we have Caden Live, OBS Studio, Spotify, and VLC again. And then we have our power sessions. Alright, I'm going to right click on the desktop. I'm going to choose Configure Desktop. See what kind of wallpapers are installed by default. Looks like some of your standard wallpapers you see in KDE on pretty much every distro. Uh, beautiful wallpapers, but you know, there's nothing extra added. I've seen all these wallpapers before in other Linux distributions. Uh, let me do this dark blue one here. If I'm going to use this light breeze theme, you know, a really dark blue background fits perfectly with that. Alright, let's open up our system settings. Our workspace theme. Let's uh, check out the icons. We have the breeze icons, breeze dark, oxygen, the Edweta icon theme, which is that hideous theme that is the default icon set in GNOME. And that is a uh, PC Linux OS 
in a nutshell. In a nutshell, very quick overview of the PC Linux OS KDE desktop. Uh, again, PC Linux OS is a rolling release distro, but it is, by most people's account, a stable rolling release distro. I know that seems like an oxymoron, stable and rolling release, but in PC Linux OS, their case, it's probably true because they are not a bleeding edge rolling release distro, meaning they're not putting those fresh packages out as soon as they're available. They're holding a lot of stuff back. If I look around some of these programs installed by default on PC Linux OS, for example, I'm sure I could find some packages that are quite a bit older than the freshest packages out there, you know, if I was running Arch or Gentoo. So, uh, a lot of people really like PC Linux OS for that, being a rolling release distro, but holding some stuff back, being pretty stable. Uh, the core community behind PC Linux OS, they're very enthusiastic. Uh, they have a great community behind them. I was able to uh, find documentation on some of the stuff that I was uh, having problems with on this install, actually, such as in the install, I had problems with that bootloader. The Grub2 bootloader did not want to install on this. I don't know if that was just me, this machine, virtual machine in my case, or uh, the, the snapshot, this ISO that I just happened to pull, pull down. Maybe it'll be corrected in a few days or a couple weeks. But the Grub2 bootloader would not install without crashing the installer. So on the install, I give the install kind of a B instead of an A. You know, I gotta gotta knock it down at least one score because of the uh, the bootloader. The desktop desktop gets an A. Love the KDE desktop environment. Uh, pretty sensible choices for software installed by default. So uh, give PC Linux OS a try, guys. Peace.